Giants. Let's do this. Raiders. Let's do it. Raiders are coming off a bye week. They're five and two. An inflated five and two, but it's still five and two. Uh, two wins prior against the Broncos and Eagles. Eagles, we have not played yet. Broncos, we lost to. They put up over 30 points in each of those two games. And I have not watched the Giants Raiders game since 2013. So I'm so excited to watch this one in 2021. Um, I missed the 2017 game for reasons that you may not know, but uh, I'll leave that under the rug. But that was the game where Ben McAdoo coached his last game as the head coach of the Giants. They lost 24 to 17. Raiders lead the all-time series 8-5, to five, and I remember the most memorable Giants-Raiders game I remember was 2005, New Year's Eve. The Giants needed a win to clinch the NFC East. Tiki Barber goes off for a 95-yard score. Plexico had a 75-yard score. Giants 11-5, and five, NFC East champs, and they stop former Giant QB Kerry Collins at the goal line, stuff him, Playoffs, baby, 11 and 5 Giants. And I went to sleep, very happy young boy that night. And I woke up and it was 2006. I remember that game pretty well, too. Tiki, 95 yard. That's that was the icing on what was probably his. I actually, no, not probably. It, 2005 was his best season as a giant. If you look at the numbers, he had so many games where he like rattled off at least like. <laughs> 150 yards. He even had a he even had a game where he broke a giant single game record that was like 50 plus years old. He had like 206 yards against Kansas City Chiefs. He was unstoppable that year. I could get into what happened afterwards, but I won't. But I definitely remember that game. That was definitely an underrated giant season and pretty much the first good Giants team that I can remember, actually. What a nightmare that game was. Corey, if I knew you'd be blowing us up, we would have had you on the show tonight to talk about this, man. Uh, damn, yeah, that, that was a nightmare game. I remember Doug Gabriel was catching passes for you guys that game. Yeah, Randy Moss was a Raider too, remember? Lamont Jordan, yeah. Um, I don't think they had Jervicious, but anyway. Uh, also, fun fact about this game – the Raiders' current interim head coach, Rick Basaccia, is a local native of Yonkers, New York, right <laughs> down the road from Hank and I. How yep. funny is that? Definitely not not a local for me. That was too far for me. <laughs> yeah, a little, little bit too far. Sam is located elsewhere in the state of New York. Uh, <laughs> but, but I'm in uh, Westchester, and I've been to Yonkers many a time over the course of 25 years. It's not too bad of an area. Bisaccia, and this is weird. The Raiders have come out and said this already. The guy's been interim head coach for two games. The locker room has his back, and they want him to return next year as the head coach. He played seven games this year. How can you possibly say that about a guy? I mean, it doesn't really make sense. Um, yeah, I'm really guessing that might have sense. to do with – I'm guessing something about that might have to do with John Gruden or something like that. But, yeah, no, If they, I, I guess they just really like him so much. I don't know. <laughs> certified savage you know that, that's a very interesting comment um expect to see news of gentleman's disappearance in a few days next uh, that's uh, great this is an upset alert raiders keep winning but they're not exactly a team i look at as a five and two team i agree with you they always fall off in the second half of the season plus their team has been in disarray lately with all the incidents let's talk about henry ruggs who was unfortunately involved in a DUI car crash incident Tuesday morning that killed a 23-year-old woman and her dog. Ruggs was driving 156 miles per hour, 127 when the airbags deployed. Ruggs was released by the Raiders on Wednesday morning and a um, huge loss for the Raiders. Uh, I'm not going to get too far into the incident and what you know he's dealing with, but uh, just a terrible blow for a Raiders team. This guy was their leading receiver, uh, young kid, played for Alabama, second-year guy, and it's, it's a real shame. Yeah. It's a shame. And just want to say, you know, thoughts and, and good vibes go out to the to the woman's family who passed away. And 
you know, it's really just a horrible thing. And, yeah. you know, I hope Henry Ruggs gets whatever help he needs as well. But unfortunately, it seems like he's going to be serving some jail time. So it's all around just a horrible situation. Nobody wins here. No. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. And listen, if you're ever in a situation where you're at a party, get an Uber. I don't care. Yes. Don't Agreed. complain about the prices of an Uber when you could be spending jail time and be paying as much as 10 grand on a DUI sentence or death. But yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, the guy's no also loaded driving. guys also loaded as an NFL player. So I'd imagine he could afford an Uber. Um, but true that? Steve, if Graham calls that game the way he did against the G the, the chiefs, I give the shot, the giants a shot at beating the Raiders. I agree, Steve. You're going to see our picks in just a few moments, but um, boy, oh boy, a couple transactions this week that happened. Uh, Saquon Barkley, Matt Skura, and Xavier McKinney, in addition to Gary Brightwell now, all in COVID-19 protocol. Uh, there was a report that said the Giants had 13 positives, but 12 of them apparently were false positives, including Saquon Barkley. The only person in the organization that I did hear – Test positive was running backs coach Burton Burns. That's why Barkley and Brightwell are in the protocol. Um, Giants signed wide receiver Alex Bachman back to the practice squad, a guy who plays some pickleball with license plate guy, uh, <laughs> who we hope to get on a, on a later uh, show this season from Rockland County. And Farrow Cooper as well, former Panther shocker there. Um, also, fun fact. Jackson Barton, former practice squad guy for us, is now the swing tackle for the Raiders. Fun fact. There you go. One of two former Giants on the Raiders, including Jonathan Hankins. But now, before we get into the keys of the game, we'll just catch up on a couple comments. Corey, absolutely agree. These athletes have no excuses. Yep. Thank you. James, very well said. I Man, James and Corey, you guys have been great tonight in the comments section. Yeah. Really appreciate both of you. James actually commented at the end of my um, episode last night, actually. So, James, appreciate you uh, keeping the comments here, too. Tom, fun fact, Scavetta. Well, you know, <laughs> that's why we have a fun fact Friday trend going on Review and Preview. Make sure to catch our fun fact Friday post tomorrow on our IG account at 12 p.m. noon. Tomorrow is Friday. Sports. I didn't even realize tomorrow was Friday. <laughs> yeah, uh, two days away from another loss, huh? Uh, sorry. <laughs> Wait. I don't know. I, I didn't know. say I, – I did not make my pick for the game yet. Just saying. Oh, All right. All right. Thursday night football starting soon. So let's roll through these keys to the game for let's the go. Giants and the Raiders. Keys of the game. Uh, Sam, I would like to start with you. What is your key – to the game for the Giants. Um, one of my keys for the game is definitely going to have to stop the Raiders defense. They have been on a roll and just absolutely horrible. I I'm sorry, not horrible, really great. However, what is not as great is their run game. So we need to make sure that we use Devontae Booker as much as possible and use him in the way that we did with the Chiefs. Because if we if we utilize him against the Raiders' vulnerable run game, I think that's going to help us out a little bit. So that is definitely going to be something that's very important, as well as the fact that Daniel Jones needs to be protected. I feel like I say this every single week, but please protect Daniel Jones. He was running all around the, the field on Monday night, and it was just he, he can't do what he needs to do if he's running around trying to get away from defenses. So that's what I'm saying. I like that point a lot. Um, Devontae Booker going up against his former team, 216 rushing yards with two touchdowns on the season. And the Raiders do have a solid defensive line. I think that is the one strength of their defense, Sam. They have Max Crosby, Yannick Ngakwe, Solomon Thomas, rookie Quentin Jefferson, and former giant Jonathan Hankins. So that's the one solid part about their defense. So I do think establishing a running game is very important, Hank. Yeah, I agree. And um, as far as my key to the game, what do you think I'm going to say? Get off Already the field know. on third down. Enough said. The The Chiefs last uh, last Monday, they, they were 41% on third downs, which 
in the grand scheme of things, that might not seem too bad. But when you consider that Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback, I think the giant, I think a few uh, third, third down stops, that could have been the difference between a win or loss. And now with the Raiders not having Henry Ruggs, I think it'll be interesting to see how the defense does stopping them in these third down situations. And yeah, I would say getting off the field on third down. And I think another thing you could maybe argue is I'm going to add this too, even though it's not in the script, limit the penalties. That was probably Mm -hmm. one of the most, as I said, undisciplined games I have seen from the giants. And it's probably not the first time I've said that this year, but Last last game in particular, 11 penalties, not too many of them. You could maybe make the case for the Travis Kelsey, but even then, none of them were any calls that I thought the refs were in the wrong throwing the flag about. And if the Giants are going to go anywhere and make any miraculous run, it starts with this game. Keep the penalties to a minimum. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also think stopping the run is key. Uh Chiefs ran all over the Giants on Monday Night Football. Derek Gore and Darrell Williams combined were solid. However, Josh Jacobs is only averaging under 41 rushing yards per game, but he does have five rushing touchdowns. They've used him more in the short yardage situation. Raiders also have one of the weaker offensive lines in football. Outside of Colton Miller and Alex uh, Alex Leatherwood, they don't really have anybody. So their 31st ranked rushing offense does not scare me, but I still think stopping the run is important because they're down Henry Ruggs and you want to make them throw to guys like Hunter Renfro, make mm-hmm. them throw to Brian Edwards, try to get them the ball. Although Brian Edwards is second on the team with seven big plays this season, 2023rd round pick from the South Carolina Gamecocks. So I think he could be a guy that emerges onto the scene here as that potential new wide receiver one. Because I always viewed Renfro as a wide receiver, too. I don't think he'll ever be a wide receiver one. But I think Edwards is that guy you're looking at saying, hey, you know, you, um, Renfro, Darren Waller, to the tight end. We have to stop the tight end. That's a big key. But one other key, score touchdowns in the red zone. (laughs) Do not kick field goals. This defense is not too great. Uh, Giants have one of the worst red zone offenses in the NFL. And one sad stat. No Giants player has more than one touchdown catch through eight weeks. Lovely. Good Lord. It, well, it, it just keeps on getting worse the more I look at these stats. Key to the game. Pressure, David Carr's. I was just going to say that, Noah. I was just going to say that the, the Raiders average – well, Derek Carr gets sacked at least two times a game. So with how Ojolari, Williams, how these guys have been playing in these games, it is absolutely like very, very possible for us to get car down on the ground. So I was just going to say that, Noah, and that, that I agree with you. Definitely a good key to the game. Absolutely. Uh, Corey says he likes Edwards a lot. He is. Zay Jones will have to step up. Zay Jones is now wide receiver three. Mm-hmm. So... It's going to be challenging for the Raiders to try to find that new number one target, but hopefully Edwards emerges. So moving on, players to watch. Um, Obviously, I think Derek Carr is one for the Raiders, completes almost 68% of his passes, second most passing yards per game this season on average in the NFL. The question is, how will he be able to rebound without Henry Ruggs? Um, He's one player. I like a lot. Um, Another player for the Raiders, obviously, um, that I want to throw out there that a lot of people might not talk about is Nate Hobbs. Um, Him and Trayvon Morig are two players in that secondary. I think people should keep an eye on Nate Hobbs. Pleasant surprise coverage for a Raiders secondary that was porous (laughs) last year. So those are my two players for the Raiders. Um, Yeah, we'll each do two players for each team this week, if that's cool. Um, Mm -hmm. Hank, I'll throw you in the spot here. Who do you got for Vegas? All right. First one I'm going to say is uh, Hunter Renfro, and not to be confused with the uh, outfielder for the Boston Red Sox, but the wide receiver for the LA Raiders is actually leading the team with 38 receptions, 399 receiving yards, few touchdowns, and he also has 186 yards that come after the catch, and you know that he's going to be getting the ball a lot with the absence of a significant name in that wide receiving core, so definitely going to have to watch out for that. And uh, 
Sam, I believe it was you that told me yesterday that he has the nickname Third and Renfro. That's pretty cool. And yep, it's a it's it adds up to my favorite key in the game: get off the field and third down. And this guy in particular, Giants secondary, will have to watch him like a hawk. And the other name that I have for you, I'm gonna have to give you uh, Max Crosby. He is leading the team with five sacks, 18 tackles, and this is a guy that I would imagine the offensive line is gonna be doing their is going to be giving the offensive line the hands full for sure. Absolutely. And Sam, before we get to you, Steve asks the question, is it me or has Dexter Lawrence disappeared a bit? Um, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I don't – I mean, I think he's still putting up good numbers. Um, We're just not talking about him as much. Yeah. Again, he's been overshadowed by Leonard Williams and Aziz Ojolari. I think now that the Giants have a legit pass rusher – um, you know, Dexter, he's not getting to the quarterback as much. They're, I think they're taking them off more on passing downs. I think the Giants have used that NASCAR formation a lot where they go with Leonard, Aziz, uh, Lorenzo Carter, and then Zimenez. I think that's what they've been doing on third and long, at least from what I've seen. I could be wrong, though. But uh, Sam? I am going to go um, for Vegas. I'm going to go with Darren Waller um, with mm -hmm. Ruggs no longer being on the team. Uh, Carr loves Darren Waller, and I believe he's coming back off of an injury of some sort in this game. Um, so he's been missing time. He's hungry. He's ready to go. And he is, I think, one of the uh, kind of underrated tight ends of this league. People talk about Kelsey and Kittle all day long, but I do believe that Darren Waller belongs up there. So, He's definitely going to be someone to look out for. And I'll go with uh, on the defensive side, Yannick Ngakwe, four sacks, 15 tackles, three passes defended. I mean, he is just it, it, between him and Crosby. This defense really is something strong and definitely something to look out for. Interesting. Yeah. I agree. I like it a lot. Um, Denzel Perryman, too, leads them in tackles. He's solid. Um, we talked about Crosby and Gokwe. Uh, we we'll go in reverse. Crumbs. What's that? We left you crumbs to pick off of Tom. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's okay. I mentioned Carr and Nate Hobbs before. Um, oh, right, right. So we'll go in reverse order here. Sam, you can start with your two for the Giants. Then we'll go Hank and then me. And then we'll okay. get into these predictions and the injury report. So um, I think that one of these guys is going to be very obvious for me, and that's going to be Kyle Rudolph. Um, after getting targeted in the red zone in the, the Monday night game, I'm just hoping that they realize that this is this is the move that we need to do, and, and they do that again. So Kyle Rudolph needs more reps. He's going to get more reps. And after Daniel Jones has gotten that taste of how well uh, Rudolph is in the end zone, as uh, I've been seeing on Twitter, he's called – uh, Kyle, the red, uh, the red zone Rudolph reindeer, something like that. <laughs> well, he just had a kid today. Are you serious? That's why he yeah. wasn't at practice. Makes sense. He's the newest member that. of the Rudolph family 39 oh, minutes ago. Good for him. Yeah, I saw it was like did not practice due to personal reasons. And I was like, oh, my God, I hope everything's OK. But that apparently everything is great. Um, so congrats to Kyle Rudolph. That is super, super. There it is. Rudolph, the red nose reindeer tight end begging for snaps. Yeah, definitely. And on the other end, um, I'll jump off of my keys to the game comment. And that'll be Devontae Booker. Run the ball. Kid can do it. We can get yards that way. Um, and he did such a great do job on Monday. So those are my two. And that's us assuming that Barkley's not going to play, which yeah. I don't think he is. Yeah, I don't think he is either. But for my players of the week, or sorry, players to watch rather, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at the defensive side of the ball. And my first one is Leonard Williams. Had a bit of a slow start, but he has slowly started to get better. In fact. I think he, he went consecutive weeks with getting a sack. So he's another guy the Raiders definitely have to watch out for. And since I mentioned Leonard Williams, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna say Aziz Ojolari. This guy has been probably one of the uh, best players on, our defense, on the defensive side of the ball this year. He's probably the one guy you pretty much see show up every week. And as I'm looking for the comments, it's hard to get noticed when you have the best – best pass rushing since 
<laughs> to Lawrence Taylor. No, I don't think so. I wouldn't even, in fact, I'm not even, not only am I going to say he's not only no LT, he's, he's no Sam Huff either. Old school Giants linebacker from the 50s and 60s. For those of you who do not know, Google that guy. He was another pretty big deal linebacker for the Giants way back yeah, when. But was. in any event, Aziz Ojolari, I would imagine, is going to be all over the place. I expect him to be another big factor too. So, yeah, those are my players to watch. All right. So you went Leonard and Ojolari. Mm -hmm. Sam, you went Kyle Rudolph and – Booker. Booker. Okay. I'm going Daniel Jones. Um, still the leading rusher on the team. Uh, Giants have the <laughs> eighth ranked passing offense in the NFL this year, partially due to him. I think he's going to ball out on Sunday and have a great game. I think he's going to find guys like Kadarius Tony. Um, and that's actually my other player to watch is him leads the Giants with 343 receiving yards. 200 of those yards have come after the catch. Um, he makes players miss in open space. He's yet to score a touchdown this year, but with Shepard unlikely to play, he might be wide receiver one. Although Galladay did get in a limited practice today, so Tony could potentially be wide receiver two on Sunday if Galladay does play. Um, so that'll be interesting. Uh, you know, and then honorable mention for me is James Bradbury, leads the team with nine passes defended, three interceptions. Um, he is going to be probably matched up against Hunter Renfro as of right now, so I'm interested to see how that goes. Corey says, I think Waller will have a huge game. Corey, I think you're right. I think Waller will have a huge game. I think the Giants, again, they're good at limiting big plays defensively in the passing game, so what's open? The middle of the field. Cover two man, Tampa two. The press man scheme hasn't been working too well for us, so a lot of coverage, a lot of zone. Uh you know, but we'll see what happens because um, Giants need to stop Josh Jacobs first in that running game. So, um, yeah, those are our keys and our players to watch. Um, injury report. Oh, the Raiders barely have anybody. Jonathan Hankins <laughs> and John Simpson were both full today, but let's get to the Giants. Saquon Barkley did not practice dealing with an ankle injury and COVID protocol. Sterling Shepard with a quad did not practice. Pettis also did not practice with a shoulder. Nate Ebner, no practice with an ankle. Lorenzo Carter, also an ankle. Xavier McKinney and Gary Brightwell, also in COVID protocol, did not practice. Kyle Rudolph had a baby today, so he did not practice. Don't be worried about Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. He will be available <laughs> on, on, the, on the sleigh on Sunday. Um, Kenny Galladay was limited with a knee. Uh, I think we have to see how he is tomorrow, whether or not we can determine him to play. I think Tony will play despite his thumb injury. I think he's going to power through. I think the Giants at this point, they didn't trade guys like Evan Ingram and Darius Slayton, who the Giants were asked about Slayton, by the way, by a couple of teams, including the New Orleans Saints. But the Giants are, didn't trade anybody because Judge and Gettleman want to keep their jobs. And I don't blame them for not wanting to trade anybody. They went all in on this season. Eight weeks in, I mean, you can't trade the house, I guess, right? Even though it would have been nice to deal with him. Anyway, Caden Smith limited with a knee. John Ross limited with a quad. This doesn't end, boy, doesn't it? And then Matt Skura practicing full today after missing yesterday's practice due to a COVID protocol. So it took about <gasps> five minutes to go through the Giants and about <laughs> 10 seconds to go through the Raiders. Yeah, when I when I did the injury report earlier today, I had to look through like several different websites because I thought I was looking at the wrong thing. But no, it was just two guys, and they were both full participants. All right, so it's time. It's the time that everybody's been waiting for. Our favorite time of the week, our game predictions, and of course the Raiders—they are favored. I believe they're two and a half, three point favorites on the road. Uh, Noah says he expects Tony to go off. I expect him to go <laughs> off as well. Hope you're right about that. Game predictions. Sam, you are up first. It has been many weeks that I have been rooting against the Giants, and I have decided that this is the week I will be going with the Giants. I am picking the Giants to beat the Raiders in MetLife Stadium 20 to 17. It's going to be close. It's going to come down to a field goal. But I'm, I'm going with it this week. You know what? This might shock you. 
I actually have the Giants winning as well. I'm going to give you a final score, 27-23. I actually think the Giants will probably be ahead for most of the game. They're probably going to be sitting on their lead, but for the Raiders, it's going to be too little too late. I think the Giants somehow find a way to hold off because I don't know if the Raiders are as good as 5-2, and two, but I, I just think this is a game the Giants are definitely capable of winning, and Fingers crossed, knock on wood. I actually want to mention I will be at this game on Sunday. Very excited. And I'm hoping to see a good one. And looking forward to watching this game with a few good friends of mine, one of which is a hardcore Raiders fan, been that way for a long time. He's not. He's no bandwagoner, and I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, all right. Well, now this got much less interesting. Sam's picking the Giants. Hank's picking the Giants. Hell, I might as well throw in the towel as well because I'm picking the Giants too. Um, normally, on a normal week, Ooh. if the Raiders weren't going through all this mess, Ooh. I would pick them to win. But look, they're traveling across the country. They have a lot of issues right now uh, yep. at their wide receiving core. Um, I think e either team could win this football game, but from the beginning of the season, I marked this game as a win. I'm going to stick to that. Have the Giants winning by – Oh, you guys are going to like this. Final score, 24-23. I think the Giants get a one-point win. Nice. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. So I know Hank went 27-23. So uh, I have the Giants scoring 24 points. And I do think Galladay will play on Sunday. I think that is a big difference maker for the Giants. Having Galladay and Tony, they won't have Shep. They won't have Barkley, we think. So that's what I'm thinking. Man, it's not good. We usually – when the two of you pick the Giants, they typically don't win. So uh, I'm really worried. No, oh. this this is one. Should, should I be worried? I, I don't know. That's kind of offensive, Tom. Oh, I'm well, it, it was it was meant to be offensive. <laughs> Actually, Tom, maybe you should. My track record at MetLife Stadium isn't that great, so I don't know. But this is one of the rare games I actually feel better about the Giants' chances. So take what I said with a grain of salt. We'll see. Tom picking the Giants is the equivalent of a major plot twist at the end of a show season. Well, you know what? I appreciate that, Noah. And, you know, I knew I, I knew this comment was coming all show that I'm about to pin. And Brian McArdle has not missed any prediction when he has commented on our show. Oh, no. Brian McArdle says, I'll break the sweep here. Hope I'm wrong, but I can't go with the Giants this week. Big week from Waller and Kenyon Drake, a guy who we didn't mention, 27-16 Raiders. Um, Brian, Dude, Brian, thank you for ruining our evening and our show as well. Uh, really appreciate the comment. I spend all my Thursday mornings with Brian McArdle. Make sure to go check out our new episode on From the Stands where we bash the college football playoff committee uh, and their rankings this week. Uh, I hope no, nobody from the committee is listening, but uh, Brian does a great job putting out stuff. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook page, subscribe to From the Stands. We bring it all to you. Andy Hopper, Brian McArdle, and myself. Just three guys from three different parts of the country. No big deal. Steve, Tom is on a roll tonight. Thank you, Steve. You're on a roll with the comments as well. Really appreciate that. Corey says, thank you, Brian. Uh, <laughs> well, somebody had to pick the Raiders. And Brian... Hopefully that breaks any potential jinx since you guys went three for three Giants. Well, I hope so too, Brian. We'll Brian, see. I... he predicted the Kyle Trask pick. He predicted the win against the Saints. He predicted the win against the Panthers. And he predicted Cincinnati to beat Notre Dame two weeks before it happened. So, God. Hey, I'll what say this, though. Keep in mind, another thing I forgot to mention, the Raiders track record playing on the East Coast. It's not it's good. Bad. Yeah. And they also haven't won in New in New York, New Jersey, whatever, since two thousand one. So I mean we'll we, I've literally been, been picking against the Giants for weeks now. I feel like this was I'm I'm up on my confidence. I did well in a game even though they lost. Like I just I'm mm -hmm. feeling it. I'm really feeling it. So mm -hmm. That's it. let's go. Let's go big blue. Yes. That's right. Uh, Sam Hank, any final thoughts before we sign off tonight and watch some Thursday night football? 
Yes, I'm ready to watch Mike White be a Hall of Fame quarterback today. Um, <laughs> I'm going to place a prop bet this week. Uh, uh, but, yeah, no, I think we hit everything in this game. I'm I'm excited for it, and I think it's going to be a good game. So let's go Giants. All I'm going to say is this. The hanky curse at MetLife Stadium has to end sooner or later. This- I am going to see a win live. It is going to happen. It is the last time I saw a win was when I, interestingly enough, we beat Fitzpatrick and Jameis, uh, the Buccaneers in 2018. It's going to happen. Let's go, Big Blue. I'm pumped. That's all I have to say. You can't say that, Hank. You can't. Well, I'm sorry. I just, I'm trying to give a little bit of hope up, man. Like, come on. I'm teasing. All right. (laughs) Manifest, Tom. Manifest it. it. Great show, folks. Oh, Manifest. That is a great show, by the way. Uh, (laughs) Mike White, the Western Kentucky legend. Yep. Well, folks, we appreciate you all tuning in to Big Blue Avenue tonight. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Big Blue Avenue. If you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And follow Review Preview Sports on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. This is the platform we podcast our Big Blue Avenue show on every Thursday at 7 p.m. On behalf of Sam Cardona, Hank and Dictor, I'm Tom Scavetta saying so long. You've been watching Big Blue Avenue here on Facebook Live. Have a good night, everybody, and let's go Big Blue.